Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to uh, another one of my uh, like of logs. I think about probably two uploads ago, I did probably say I wouldn't be, it's unlikely I'd be buying any more like as well. I'm afraid uh, I have. You've already seen one of them, and that is the uh, the 1A, which is uh, lurking in the, in the background. But the new member of the collection is a like a two and uh it's sort of in one respect it's i suppose it's filled a gap i did mention i think maybe i didn't but i did mention i think at some point i'd like to get hold of an early like a two uh, well i've managed to do that um but there are sort of a few little potential problems with it um but first of all i think uh we'll deal with the history of the uh, of the Leica 2. Now, I've deliberately got the Leica 1 in the background because the one I've got, which you have seen before, dated from uh, 1930. And this particular one, which I'll put there, this particular one has got a fixed Elmar lens. Um, and it's a, as I said, a 1930 example. Uh, made about five years into production because I think the 1A came into production about 1925. So uh, this is a relatively early, early Leica. I mean, the production figures even then were, were pretty high. But the, the Leica 2 appeared in about 1932. And it's essentially the same camera but it has a, a built-in rangefinder, which is what I think probably most people would consider to be the norm for a Leica. And if you've got any Leicas in your collection, pound to a penny, it's got the built-in rangefinder, a built-in coupled rangefinder. Now on this um, Leica one here, I've got it fitted with the, the rangefinder, but this is a separate rangefinder which goes into a little uh, bracket on the top of the camera. And the two images that you adjust and they come together are vertical rather than horizontal, simply because the rangefinder is mounted vertically. And of course it's uncoupled. So you'd have to check your focus, take the reading, and then manually put that reading into the camera lens, whereas the, the Leica 2 came with what's called a coupled rangefinder. And the two windows at the back, that's the rangefinder window there, and that's the viewfinder. The Leica 2 was the camera which was copied by the Russians to produce their Fed and Zorki models. And this particular one, as you can see, is finished in black paint again. And the reason for that is that all the early Leicas like this were finished in, in black. This isn't anything um, out of the ordinary. The, this particular camera is actually an early two. It, I think it's the 446th one to be, uh, be produced. Um, and it was produced in 1932, which was, not surprisingly, the first year of production. The lens it came with is the normal lens you expect to see on cameras of this age. It's the Elmar F 3.5 50mm or 5cm lens. This one, being an early one, is nickel. Um, and they're generally known as nickel Elmars and because it's an early one the aperture figures are not quite what we normally expect to see and if you look closely there you'll probably see what I mean the maximum shutter speed as well on the Leica 2 is 1 500th of a second and it's only recently that I realized that these earlier Leicas, the, the shutter speed control here, it's actually of a wider, slightly wider diameter um, than the later cameras. 
And I only became aware of that when uh, I read it somewhere about briefly made mention of that fact. And uh, sure enough, it is not a lot, but I do actually think it looks well, actually rather more attractive. As you can see, we have the Z um, setting here, which you'll see on all pre-war cameras. Then the speeds go from 120th, 130th, 140th, 160th, 100th, 200th, and then 1500th of a second. And that was the fastest speed available on these cameras. Um, I will collapse the lens again. And put the uh, a genuine early Leica lens cap back on, finished in black as well. And we'll have a quick little tour around the camera. Um, taking the base plate off, you can see there the camera looks uh, quite clean. There's a take up spool, which is, I think, of the correct early type. Apologies if you can't see this too well, but the, the the this room, dining room, doesn't get very much light on it during the daytime. There's a nice little bit of brassing here and there. And this is, again, an early camera because we have this odd little sort of a plug here. And I think this was something to do with setting the focus up on the... Uh, where the cameras were being originally assembled or some setting anyway and this one has it as well you won't see that one on later cameras so what else is to say about it well um the camera has got problems and i'll go into those later but the why did i buy this one now you may remember a couple of uh, weeks well, it's probably a month or so back now I was debating whether it's worth buying cameras at auction houses. And um, I was very much on the side of not doing that anymore, but just buying from dealers. And it's, it's a case really of, uh, yes, that's what I'd recommend, but I haven't because this one did come from an auction house. Um, so it's i'm saying one i'm i'm recommending one thing and i'm doing something entirely different but the the reason i think you have to be careful with cameras that you buy at auction houses is that they are probably going to need some attention and this one i suspect will what happened was um i've mentioned before there's an auction house quite close to uh, where we live about a few miles away and uh, they were having a uh, uh, a collector's auction now normally pre-covid this auction house um, used to have about, I think about probably an auction once a month and their viewing days were I think Thursdays and Fridays and the auction was on the Saturday and then when um, covid appeared um, they went purely to online auctions and they were doing those over a two-day period. Um, I don't know how you went about viewing items, whether you could make, I think you, maybe you could make an appointment and appear like that. Um, not quite, it's a, you know, it, 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 over the COVID period, lockdowns and then semi-lockdowns and so on, the, the, so the rules changed and they were altering how they operated very slightly. But even now, um, they're not having their Saturday auctions. And the last auction, and the auction this camera came from, was a two-day auction. And uh, the viewing days, I think, were... I think they were Tuesday and Wednesday. Then the auction was Thursday and Friday. And um, I hadn't taken any notice of the lots, but my wife was looking through them because she's quite keen on certain bits of ceramics, and she was just having a, a general browse through what was available. And then she said, you know, there are Leicas here for sale and other cameras. And sure enough, there were. I think there were six Leicas. And there were a number of um, Hasselblads as well. Um, and the, the, the usual thing, the, 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 there was boxes of a collection of cameras which go for 
very little because nobody really knows if the cameras are working or not but i was just interested in the i think it was six likers anyway and one particular one i immediately took an interest in was this black Leica 2 because i've been after a two um it sort of goes quite nicely with the with the one and um so we decided on one of the viewing days to go and have a look at it excuse me while i have a quick uh, slurp of coffee and so we did and um, i initially looked at the camera and um i took the uh i can't i think i can't remember in which order i did this but i do my like usual like checks first thing i did was i had to listen to the shutter now the shutter appeared to be operating well didn't appear to be sticking or anything like that and um but it did, I, I, because it was quite noisy in there i had the camera to my ear and i fired it a few times and it, it actually sounded a bit sort of oh, it's difficult to it, it didn't really sound like a like a shutter should do these cameras i think mean, these pre-war cameras they don't make that schnick that the later cameras did these do actually in my opinion they clunk i mean i've got quite a few of these some have been serviced and others haven't but they all sound the same they are they're not a quiet shutter in my opinion they're quite they're quite noisy quite loud but this one had a it, it felt a little bit dry it, it, it's like it's difficult to explain what i mean but it's just vaguely slightly screechy but that may have been because i had it really close to my ear i don't normally do that but it was quite noisy in there um and i had a quick look through the lens but the the, the auction room where it goes on isn't it's quite dark and i i couldn't really tell whether the rangefinder was working or not but when i took the uh the lens off and i looked at the shutter blind then the the, the first blind um is okay and when i say the first blind that's the one that you can see when the shutter's not cocked but then as i round the the the, the uh film advance through to the the blind that you can see when the shutter is cocked clearly that shutter um needs replacing uh, sorry that blind needs replacing because it's crinkled and it's a classic case of you know it's going to need some attention at some point so now at that point i said no i i dismissed it and i put the lens back on and put it back in its case it did come with a case rather a nice case actually um and in fact i might cover cases one of these days i've never i've never i've now amassed quite a few like a cases and they do sort of vary a bit but um anyway i i sort of dismissed the camera i thank them very much put the lens back uh, back on and put the camera back in its case and really sort of i didn't think too much more about it um now at the same time i i hadn't quite forgotten about it. it's always lurking there because you don't see many of these early likers for sale that often um well, at least not when you want one if that makes sense probably now i don't want one i'll probably find hundreds but um it, it you know it, it's it did look a nice camera and um i don't really know what the price these go for these days because like like a lot of things the prices seem to be all over the place um but the camera the auction house had valued it at between 250 and 300 pounds which i've looked at their valuations before and all auction houses do this they, they tend to be very conservative in their uh, in their values and it goes for any item um not just not just cameras um but I was talking about this with my wife and she said well why don't you just put a a, a, um, a a value on there that you're prepared to pay um so i thought well she, she had the idea of since they've um got to a top valuation of 300 pounds she suggested 310 which i you know it, it's it, it's in, in relative things today it, it's i don't think it's a lot of money so anyway but obviously that depends on your circumstances doesn't it and but it didn't i mean i paid a lot more that um a lot more than that and i paid a lot more for this one 
So I thought, well, yeah, okay, nothing to lose. I don't think for a minute I will uh, get that, get the camera. Um, but I did, I put a, bud, a bid of 310. The reason I did that is because it, it could have gone up to 300 quite easily, but a lot of people may have had a, a maximum of 300 pound in their heads and gone up to that. Uh, but 310, I mean, and that don't forget is a maximum bid. Anyway, what happened was on the evening of the first day of the auction, um, my wife looked online and she said, that camera has gone for 290 pounds. So in other words, I bought it. Um, so knowing that the camera had got at least needs a new shutter blind, I um, thought, well, you know, it really is that a good buy or not? But it depends how desperately you're after something, doesn't it? What I hadn't done, though, is I, I, I hadn't really looked at, looked at the lens too closely. I'd taken the torch with me as well. Um, and I looked in the camera, and that's how I know the blind needed to repl replace him. But when, once I'd seen that blind and dismissed the camera, I, I didn't go any further. What I, you know, and I thought after, well, I've actually bought a camera. Um, how do I, you know, how do I know what the lens is like? Now the auction house did say that the lens looked clear at Funkus and everything seemed to be working, but I hadn't personally looked at it myself, so I thought um, that's a bit of a risk. Anyway, um, a couple of days later. I went up and I picked up the camera and um, I've already mentioned the uh, the fact that I knew it needed a new shutter blind. I'm about to go and uh, I'm going to have to get a torch because as usual I've done this quite unprepared. It's half of it off the top of my head. I've got a list of things here I want to uh, say to you um, and so far I haven't uh, looked at it at all because I never do because I just start rambling on so just bear with me a second I'll go and get a torch right so let's take the uh, let's take this lens off and you can see what I mean there's no film in this one. There is film in the uh, in the other one. Now, that's a good shutter blind. Now that one looks perfect to me. Can't see anything obvious amiss with that. Hope you can see that. Hope it's not too bright. The camera looks actually quite clean inside. There's the classic rangefinder coupling, nice round one, showing that it is a a genuine Leica. There's a bit of what looks like oil up there, but that whatever it is, it's dry, it's dry and it's not doing a lot. But anyway, um, hope you can see that. Hope that light's not too bright. Be okay with that. So let's wind on to the next blind. And there, I won't wind it right on because oh yes, I have now. It's wound right on, and you can see that the the other shutter. Uh, sorry, the other blind, I don't know why I keep saying shutter, the other shutter blind is, so can you see how crinkled it is? And that's what. That's why initially I put the camera down, that blind is going to need replacing. You often see blinds like that on, online when people, if you go on YouTube and you look at somebody repairing a like a blind or doing something with it, a pound to a penny, that's what the blind looks like. It's sort of, it's like a creased. I think these blinds are rubber backed silk, um, but I, do, I, I suspect as well over the years the material might have uh, might have altered, but that blind looks definitely uh, past its best. So that's uh, I, hope, I do hope the phone's picking this up properly, like so, so. That's definitely going to need some attention at some point. Um, but what, what I did do, I started uh, playing around with the camera. I'll, I'll put, the, put the lens back on now. Now that's a change because that's gone on first time. It doesn't usually happen that when I'm demonstrating something. Um, 
so uh, where were we? Yes, I, I we've done the blind. Um, so anyway, I started in a great home. I, I tried the shutter again, and now I, the shutter's cocked now. And as I said, every one of the Leicas I've got, and I've got this is the ninth one now. Um, I mean, none of these shutters strike me as being particularly quiet. This, uh, but the, the interesting thing is, it seems to have lost that to the dry sound I mentioned earlier on, because it sounds just like that, and, and that's what that's the sort of sound, exactly the same sound that all my others sound like. It's a so that's actually um, one si one sixtieth of a second. So let's go up to one five hundredth. And that sounds like all the others. Now, the only thing I can think of is maybe a lot of people tried the shutter on the camera. I certainly did. So maybe it's got the shutter, maybe it spread the lubricant over what was dry sections of the of the of the, of the mechanism. I don't. Maybe people playing about with it have um, just spread what lubricants in there. I don't know, it's just, that's just the theory. Uh, but it does now sound quite early like it's just, it, it, in the, I'm sorry, it is a clunk. It's not a schnick. The only two likers I've got that do make a sort of a schnick is the 3G and the M3. These, I mean, that's, that's not a, a quiet shutter sound in my opinion. What's that now? Let's go right down to a slow speed. That, that sounds exactly like my other Leicas, some of which have been serviced, some of which haven't. Um, so anyway, that's the that's the new Leica 2. Um, so what do I do with it now? Now, to be honest with you, I, I shall, now that the shutter sounds something like it should do, and now that um we uh I, I think what i'm going to do it's all right i've just been put off because the postman's just shoved the stack of letters through the door it sounds like a stack of letters it's probably all it's probably all rubbish but anyway um what i think i'm going to do is i'm going to pop a pop a film and you can just see uh see what it does there's also um a crack in the one of the rangefinder windows, I don't know whether you can see that, but there's there's a, there's a crack crack there. I mean, it's, it's far from far from perfect, and it could be a rather a nice uh, shelf dolly, but um, that is to say, just have on uh, on the shelf as a display item. And I think if anybody had uh, bought it for that reason, that reason alone, at, the, at, at uh, two ninety, it was quite a quite a good buy because don't forget this this has come with the, the lens as well now here's the problem now um and this is why i say was it a wise buy well i like it anyway and i like the fact it's quite an early one because the camera costs 290 pounds to get it uh, a cla it's going to cost somewhere between two and three hundred pounds now i'm talking about pounds sterling um, so that brings the total up to about you know five hundred and ninety pounds with postage having to send it off and so on you know six hundred pounds um now I've mentioned this company before this dealer before I've got no absolutely no connection with them whatsoever but um they've got a similar camera but body only um and that camera would probably have been serviced they've got one. As I say, body only, £400. So if I'd have bought that one, it would have made, in many respects, a lot more sense. But this one has come with another Elmar. Now, I could quite easily take... I've got a Nikol Elmar and another camera. I, I, I could have... It would have probably been more sensible to have um, bought that one at £400. And it would probably be working perfectly. Um, and 
I could have probably gone in, if I'd have wanted another lens, I could have taken a, a lens off one of my other Leicas um, and been sensible, I suppose. Um, but um, I don't always do things sensibly. Or I could have actually paid the £400, then gone and bought another Elmar. But the Elmars tend to be going for quite a lot of money now. So I'd have probably actually have been maybe maybe better off i'm just trying to think off the top of my head what else a good elmar goes for but the trouble is i said the prices seem to be going up all the time so i mean whether this was a sensible buy uh well i'll leave you to judge that but um so it's a, it's a case of i said earlier on don't don't uh don't take any notice of what i said because i've very much gone against what i intended to do but I do think it's a it's a nice camera and it'll be quite nice to invest a little bit of money in, in it and get it back to its well, near original condition because it doesn't look quite quite clear. I think um, I've said everything I need to say about the camera. No doubt when I stop the recording I will think of a few other things as well. Um, so, I mean, there, there's the, as I've said, the... Uh, um, it, it's a difficult decision to make sometimes. Probably, in in, in essence, a, a wrong decision. But on the other hand, um, it may it may well work. I'm expecting to see uh, with that shutter in that state, shutter blind in that state. I'm expecting to see. Um, well little sort of twinkles of light if you go online you 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 can often find some of these deliberately uploaded photographs of focal plane shutters that one of the blinds or one of the blinds is porous and you get little dots white dots if it's if you're looking at a positive if you're looking at a negative you'll have little black dots but Looking at a positive, you'll have these little white dots all over the place, look like little sort of stars. Um, so it'll be interesting though to see what happens, and I, I will, I'll keep, I'll keep you updated about what I decide to do with it. Um, so again, it's another talk about you know dealers versus auction houses. Um, but I, I say the camera. I went for a bit less than I expected it to fetch a bit more than that. Although perhaps a lot of people were put off by that shutter blind. Um, so, so there we go. Um, what I did do though, um, I actually took the lens after I bought the camera because I said at the auction house I never actually inspected the lens because I'd initially dismissed the camera. And I took, uh, looking at the lens, there was what looked like a finger mark on the front element, or there was something, some smudging. So I got a microfiber cloth, and um, I just very carefully wiped round the lens in a circular motion, as if I was polishing the lens. And that those marks came off probably somebody's fingerprint because as i've said before these these elmar lenses are quite fiddly because you have to adjust the aperture if you if, you, if you're familiar with these lenses you'll know exactly what i mean but you have to use your well i use my nails and um do it like that the the this aperture lever actually is it's quite nice it, it, it's not as stiff as some i've come across it does move quite smoothly and the blades look okay um, but when I looked when I shone a lens a, a torch an LED torch through the lens there was something else in there as well it looked a bit sort of um, odd for want of a better term um, it looked misty it looked foggy and uh, you have to remember though that when and i've said this before when you start shining torches through these lenses you you'll always see dust and, and things like that even much much newer lenses even lenses a few years old you will see dust particles inside them unless they've never been used um 
it just it's just one of those things it, it just happens you can't have an you can't have an airtight lens it wouldn't work if it was airtight so what I did I looked at this and I thought yeah it, it, it's probably dry lubricant or something like that then I looked again and I thought well I hope that's all it is I hope it's nothing organic but looking at it again I thought well I think that's right on the the back of the of the back element so what I thought I would do just be on the safe side I got a cotton bud got some three percent uh, sodium hydroxide in case so no no I didn't no forget that it wasn't sodium hydroxide at all uh, that's highly caustic that's oven cleaner forget that I uh, got some three percent um, hydrogen peroxide which is much safer please don't use anything else um, just dismiss the other comment um, this is probably this is the problem with doing things off the top of your head I got some um, three percent hydrogen peroxide and um, simply uh, put a little bit on the cotton bud and in the circular motion once again I cleaned the uh, the real element in case it was something organic it, it, it wasn't it, it just came, it just came off and the, the actual lens the lens is really nice so I put the lens on my Panasonic GX7 and took a cracking shot in the garden close where well, you can't not not super close up but remember that if you put this one one of these on the Panasonic it, it instantly becomes a hundred millimeter lens and I, I do, we, we've got a, a, a metal bird back in the garden with a, a metal robbing sitting on it and I always use that for lens testing and believe me um, the result is excellent so I, I'm very happy with the condition of the lens because that was a risk because I hadn't inspected the lens so a little bit of um, instantly if you if you want to get hold of some um, hydrogen peroxide you can buy it online um, in fact sometimes if you go into a chemist shop in the certainly in the UK I think you might be able to just buy it over the counter it, it's used for all sorts of things mouthwash um, and I think in general cleaning you know if, if, if you've got uh, fungus growing somebody you know it, it's quite a useful thing to have in the house and where I say that is, and I'll say this again, that's 3% hydrogen peroxide. That's the stuff that people tend to use for getting anything they might think nasty off a lens. And I'm talking, when I say you know organic, I'm talking fungus. But what was on the back of that certainly wasn't fungus. It's just come off very, I think, I don't know what it was, quite frankly, really. It's not there now. And the lens has, the lens has um, performed uh, really well. So anyway that's 33 minutes now I've been rambling on about this so anyway there's the Leica 2 any comments well you know where to do those um, and a little bit below this will probably be the last vlog I do for this year I was going to do one actually on, on, on the Leica cases but I'm not sure if anybody would like me to do one looking at the various different Leica cases um, I'll do that and currently I've been treating quite a few of mine uh, with leather oil but uh, anyway I think that's it ladies and gentlemen so there's a Leica one I'll take this off now because it does look quite ugly with that thing sticking up there's a Leica one and there's a Leica two so uh, thank you very much and uh, I'll speak with you soon and take care and I'll speak with you Maybe, maybe next year. I don't know. Um, but if 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 this is the last time, if this is the, if if this is the last upload this year, then I'd like to wish you uh, all a very happy new year, and uh, I'll see you soon.